Question number eight, Phil Twyford. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. My question is for the Minister for Infrastructure. How many houses, if any, have been completed as a result of the Housing Infrastructure Fund since it was announced in July last year? The Honourable Stephen uh, Mr Speaker, the answer is none yet, but I think the member <laughs> may misunderstand how the fund works. It is a form of bridging finance to order, help debt-constrained... Order. Debt order. Point of uh, order. Sadly, there was such a lot of noise, I didn't hear the answer to that question. <laughs> and can we have it again? No, the question's been answered, but the Minister can complete his answer if he wants. As I say, Mr Speaker, I think the member may misunderstand how the fund works. It is a form of bridging finance to help debt-constrained councils put infrastructure in place so houses can be built. It doesn't pay for houses to be built. Supplementary, Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Is the lack of progress because the fund was rushed through in a matter of weeks to invent something for the Prime Minister's speech after a short brainstorming session with political staff? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, no, I appreciate the member's latest conspiracy theory, but actually councils have been working through a progress where they submit proposals for a share of the fund. Uh, those proposals closed on the 31st of March of this year. Uh, they are currently being assessed and the decisions will be announced and allocated to councils later this year. Uh, the good news, though, for the, for the members is that in the meantime, housing construction is at record levels, the construction workforce is at record levels, and that's good news for Auckland housing and housing around the country. Supplementary question, no, sorry, um, point of order, Mr oh, Speaker. Point of order. Phil. Um, I seek leave to table an email um, obtained under the Official Information Act from a staffer in the Finance Minister's office floating the idea for the infrastructure fund just two weeks before the Prime Minister announced it. The, the date of the email? The date of the uh, email is the 13th of June. 20, Leave us sort to table that particular email. Is there any objection? There is no objection. <laughs> Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, was Treasury correct when they advised, and I quote, these are not proposals by officials, these were ideas that were brainstormed and discussed in that light. We have not done sufficient analysis to be able to provide concrete advice, unquote, and that the fund, quote, is not likely to result in additional housing. The order, the Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think the member's criticism could be characterised as having two limbs. One is that we work too quickly, and secondly, that ministers may come up with ideas. Guilty on both counts. Su order. Supple Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Why did the Auditor-General advise that the debt from the fund should be recorded on the council's balance sheet, thus making redundant the very reason for the policy, when he gloated in the House only a few weeks ago that it would not? Or is the Auditor-General wrong? The Honourable Stephen George. Mr Speaker, I'd have to check back on the hand side. I don't, didn't gloat at all about where the debt would be held. The simple fact of the matter is if you have a debt, it appears on your balance sheet. Yeah. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Is the lack of progress from his infrastructure fund because he has spent the last 11 months scrambling around with Auckland Council officials trying to salvage a policy that would have loaded more debt onto a council that is already up against its debt ceiling? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, in answer the first part of the member's question, I think the member misheard uh, me because actually we have been making good progress. But in terms of Auckland's debt, uh, the challenge, uh, Auckland does have a challenge in debt at the moment. The Auckland Council, as I've said to the member previously, 
their income has grown substantially over the last couple of years, from three and a half billion in revenue two years ago to four billion in revenue today, except unfortunately because their expenditure has gone up so much over the same period, they don't have a debt ceiling room to do the sort of things they need to do and should be doing as a fast growing council. So we have stepped in to help and in this way we have offered uh, with a number of fast growth uh, councils interest free debt on behalf of taxpayers of New Zealand which I think is actually a pretty fair and reasonable deal to help them build their infrastructure. Sir. Supplementary question Phil Twyfen. Was the call for final proposals correct that councils will still be working on business cases for the fund this December? And if so, how does he expect a fund that takes a year and a half to even fund anything, let alone build anything, is going to help the housing crisis? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, in relation to the fund, you know, governments have this weird thing. We don't just give away money to people, we actually require some sort of arrangements to be agreed between uh, the Council and the Government. I appreciate the Labor Party never adopted that approach, but that's our approach. But in relation to the so-called housing crisis, Mr Speaker, I think Mr Twyford needs to update his talking points. We have record construction. We have record numbers working in the construction workforce. We have record numbers of apartments being built in Auckland. And we have prices in Auckland now buttoning off and steady, Mr Speaker. The member needs to update his view of the world. Question number nine, Paul Foster-Bell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Sir, 